welcome students now we'll see what are known as specific heats in this lecture okay now we have already seen first law of thermodynamics where the any amount of heat given dq is partly used in increasing internal energy and remaining part is used in doing external work strictly speaking right heat and work are path functions so we should not actually write them as dq and dw but better appropriate notation is delta q equal to du plus delta w okay but as i'm used to write as dq and dw we will be following that but strictly speaking we should write them as delta q and delta w only because they are path functions okay right now what is specific heat <coughs> what is specific heat means you take one gram of substance any substance you take either solid or liquid or whatever it is right the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of substance through one degree celsius is known as specific heat c okay specific heat capacity or specific heat in general the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of substance through one degree celsius is called specific heat that is amount of heat i'm writing it as dq okay instead of one gram if we have m grams of substance if i take m grams of substance what is the total amount of heat required to raise the temperature of m grams of substance through one degree celsius for one gram it is c for m grams it will be m into c okay this is for m grams of substance through one degree celsius now i want to increase it to from one by not by one degree celsius but by five degree celsius i want to increase but five degree celsius initially suppose say it is at 27 degree celsius okay i want to heat it up to 32 degree celsius means this what is the temperature change temperature change is 32 minus 27 that is that five degree celsius i'll write it as change in temperature dt okay if dt is equal to 1 it will be simply mc only so the total amount of heat required to raise the temperature of m grams of substance through dt is dq equal to mc dt we write okay c is called specific heat that is for heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of substance through 1 degree raise okay that is when m equal to 1 and dt equal to 1 dq equal to c that's known as specific heat m into c is called heat capacity okay amount of heat required to raise the temperature of m grams of substance through 1 degree celsius is known as heat capacity mc okay the total heat required to raise the temperature of m grams of substance through dt is dq equal to mc dt we write okay or strictly speaking delta q equal to right mc delta t we write okay delta q equal to mc delta t now what type of, where do we apply this equation where do we apply this equation means say uh, you take two different objects okay some substance okay m gram m1 grams of substance you take its specific it is c1 it is initially at a temperature t1 same okay right another object b is there this is a let us call this as b its mass is m2 its specific heat is c2 initially it is at a temperature t2 okay now i'll join these two objects like this okay when i bring them into thermal contact what happens heat always flows from high temperature to low temperature let t1 be greater than t2 you can, any substance you can take okay m1 grams means 100 grams of water at 100 degrees celsius this can be taken as what you call uh, say half liter milk at uh, 50 degrees celsius okay specific heat of water is different specific heat of milk is different what happens happens if we join them what will happen heat keeps on flowing from high temperature to low temperature up how long this keeps on flowing till they come to equilibrium temperature okay means the net flow of heat should become zero right then we say that they come to thermal equilibrium that is they come to a common temperature say x okay once they reach a common temperature x now the net flow will become zero they'll they acquire thermal equilibrium okay now what is happening here <coughs> heat lost by a is equal to heat gained by b whatever amount of heat is coming out of a that is going into b only so what is the heat lost by this material okay right that is it's dq equal to its mass is m1 okay this material specific heat is c1 okay initially it is a temperature t1 right it finally its temperature has become x so what is the change in temperature of the substance okay t1 minus x okay the same amount of heat is going into the object b also so what is the heat gained by this object heat gained by the object is m2 its mass is m2 <coughs> that material specific heat is c2 and <coughs> 
initially it is a temperature t2 now it has its temperature has increased to x that is change in temperature is final temperature minus initial temperature t2 heat lost by this material this must be equal to heat gained by this material that is m1 c1 into t1 minus x equal to m2 c2 into x minus t2 right we can find out when t1 is known t2 is known m1 c1 m2 c2 are known we can find out what will be the equilibrium temperature okay we can find out what will be the equilibrium temperature right those two objects will reach to okay this is where we'll be using this right now specific it usually for solids and liquids okay when you are increasing the temperature or decreasing the temperature okay volume of the material see when you are heating water you don't expect water to expand isn't it water you don't see any change in volume of water when you what you call decrease its temperature by one degree five degree celsius you don't expect water to contract okay there won't be any decrease in volume so usually in solids and liquids changes in volume changes in pressure will be negligibly small or there won't be there any change okay when small changes in temperature are brought in but in the case of gases okay even if you increase or decrease the temperature by one degree celsius or two or three very small changes in temperature also brings appreciable changes in volume and pressure pressure and volume will change appreciably okay but that is not the case in solids and liquids so in the case of gases what will happen if you what you call you put it on a stove and put it on a stove and heat it you increase its temperature by small amount obviously pressure will increase when pressure inside the gas increases in uh, pressure inside the vessel increases right the gas will try to push the piston up volume also will keep on increasing so appreciable changes will occur in both pressure and volume okay so here we can define two types of specifics one is because pressure and volume both are changing i'll see that initial i'll keep one parameter constant okay temperature has to increase no doubt when temperature is increasing both pressure and volume tend to increase but what i'll do is i'll first put volume also as constant pressure may increase or decrease i don't bother okay so when temperature is increasing i want right the volume to remain constant then i see what is amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of gas through one degree celsius i'll call it as molar specific heat at constant volume okay similar next time what do i do now this time i'll allow the volume to increase or decrease but i don't want pressure to increase means i want pressure to remain constant its volume may increase or decrease but during that raise of one degree celsius pressure should remain constant okay that amount of heat required right to raise the temperature of one mole of gas through one degree celsius at constant pressure i'll call it as molar specific at constant pressure so for gases we can actually define two types of specific heats right specific at constant constant volume specific at constant pressure and for gases we don't take in mass actually we take we'll measure the quantity in moles okay so for one mole of gas it is known as molar specific at constant volume molar specific at constant pressure okay now in order to find out how our cp and cv will be defined uh, how they are defined means it is like this okay you take some substance or you take one mole of an ideal gas unless and until specified we'll be talking about ideal gases only okay we'll be talking about ideal gases only so you take some substance like this a cylindrical vessel fitted with a perfectly mobile frictionless piston this is a conductor okay there is one mole of gas inside okay the gas is initially at say 27 degrees celsius room temperature okay now i want to find out molar specific at constant volume cv what does that mean right the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of gas through one degree celsius at constant volume Con volume should be constant means I'll, I'll fix the piston such that it cannot move up or down i'll put some nails into the piston it cannot move up or down now the gas is at 27 degrees celsius i want to see how much heat is required to increase its temperature by one degree celsius means from 27 to 28 degrees celsius how much heat is required so what do i do i'll put it on a stove and start heating it okay i don't know how much heat will be required so i'll heat it and by giving i'll give suppose say 100 joules okay 100 joules i have given i don't know how much heat is required so i have just given 100 joules okay when i uh, given 100 joules okay the temperature of the gas has increased from 27 to say 31 degree celsius means its temperature has increased by 4 degree celsius actually i'm looking only for one degree rise but without knowing so i gave 100 joules for 100 joules temperature has increased from 27 to 
31 means 4 degrees rise is there but I want the heat for 1 degree rise only so what do I do for 1 degree rise a constant volume right how much for 100 joules temperature has increased by 4 degree celsius means for 1 degree rise in 1 degree right celsius rise what is the amount of heat right 100 by 4 you do what is this 100 amount of heat dq given what is this 4 okay change in temperature dt so dq by dt in which process right why i'm keeping volume constant pressure may increase or decrease doesn't matter here pressure also will keep on increasing okay but volume remains constant that's what i want so this process is occurring at constant volume so do q or dq by dt at constant volume is called molar specific heat at constant volume okay cv equal to dq by dt at constant volume or dq equal to right cv dt right the moment i find cv here it is understood that i am talking about constant volume process okay right dq equal to cv dt for one mole if i take n moles of gas it will in general n cv dt n cv dt now already we have seen first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics dq equal to du plus pdv the general expression for first law of thermodynamics and what type of process it is it is an isochoric process means constant volume process in a constant volume process change in volume dv will be equal to zero okay so the gas will not do any work because piston is not moving up or down you are not doing any gas on the any work on the system system is not doing any work okay so dv work done pdv will be equal to zero so in general dq equal to du in an isochoric process or constant volume process here also i got dq equal to ncv dt so dq equal to du so in general du equal to dq equal to ncv dt in a constant volume process so wherever change in internal energy is there okay you can write it as ncv dt for n moles cv dt for one mole so in gen general expression wherever change in internal energy is there okay you can happily write it as ncv dt for n moles okay this ge most general formula for what you call change in internal energy keep that in mind okay du equal to ncv dt or internal energy u equal to ncv into t you can write at so and gas is at so and so temperature two moles of ideal gas is at so and so temperature it's molar specific at constant volume cv equal to this much so what is its internal energy ncvt differentiate this du equal to ncv dt you will get okay right this is one very very useful formula okay u equal to ncv in solving problems keep this in mind keep this formula also in mind okay so cv equal to in our fine our example in my rough example what what is the value of cv cv equal to 100 by 4 i got 25 okay joule per mole kelvin okay specific heat. units are joule per mole kelvin okay so molar specific at constant volume for this gas in my example is 25 joule per mole kelvin okay next time what do i do i want to find out cp for cp right pressure volume may increase or decrease i don't mind but pressure should remain constant means again i'll take a I, again i'll take a cylindrical vessel okay right now i'll put same n moles of ideal gas i'll put n moles of ideal gas okay right now piston is free to move up or down all that i want is what pressure should not change okay now again i'll put it on a stove and this time also the gas is initial at 27 degrees celsius okay i want to increase i want to find out what is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of this sample by one degree celsius means i want it to its temperature to increase to 28 only but this time also unknowingly i'll give 100 joules i'll give 100 joules okay such that uh, in such a way that i don't want pressure to change pressure should always be constant okay whenever you are increasing the temperature of the gas whenever you are heating the gas its temperature increases when temperature increases kinetic energy of gas molecules will increase when kinetic energy is increasing momentum of molecules will increase and the gas will try to push the piston up okay pressure tends to increase increase in pressure means what okay that pressure inside uh, the vessel is more pressure outside the vessel is less so gas will try to push the piston up okay when volume increases again pressure decreases i'll see to it that throughout that process right when i'm giving 100 joules right pressure remains constant volume may increase doesn't matter okay now now this time 
earlier when I gave 100 joules from 27 temperature has increased to 31 degrees Celsius that is 4 degrees change has occurred when I kept volume constant when I'm putting pressure constant now what happens just guess okay do you expect the gas temperature to increase to 31 degrees Celsius as before or it will be more than 31 or it will be less than 31 just guess okay right do you expect uh, you have given same 100 joules you have given earlier it has increased by 4 degrees Celsius from 27 it went to 31 okay now in this process volume may increase or decrease but pressure you want keeping constant and then you are giving same 100 joules okay do you expect the temperature to rise to 31 as before or more than 31 or less than 31 yes okay now this time the temperature will not be increased to 31 it will be less than 31 say some 30 degrees celsius only it rises to means change in temperature dt will be only 3 degrees celsius why earlier in constant volume process all the heat i am giving is used up in increasing the temperature only because according to first law dq equal to du plus dw in constant volume process there is no dw gas need not do any work so all the heat given is used up in increasing internal energy that is increasing temperature only okay that's why temperature has increased from 27 to 31 but now here what is happening when you are giving 100 joules right the gas is getting heated up its temperature is rising no doubt but the gas is also pushing the piston upwards means this gas is doing some work okay how gas is doing work now where from gas is getting energy to do that work okay it is using some of the energy given by me some of this 100 joules part of this 100 joules is getting wasted now in pushing the piston up it is not getting totally utilized to increase the temperature as before okay so out of 100 earlier in cv right in constant volume process all 100 joules was used in increasing internal energy only that is increasing temperature but out of 100 joules now what happens right some 40 joules of energy will be wasted i can say because i am looking only for temperature rise okay will get wasted in pushing the piston up okay remaining 60 joules only will be used in increasing the temperature so this time you cannot increase you cannot expect the temperature to increase to the earlier value okay it will be less than 31 i'm taking a rough example of 30 degrees celsius so now whatever it is okay 27 has become 30 so what is change in temperature 3 degrees celsius for 3 degrees celsius i am giving 100 joules for 1 degree celsius how much heat is required simply right dq okay that is 100 is amount of heat given by me by what is increase in temperature 3 degrees celsius only now what is this 100 equal to dq what is this 3 dt which process it is constant pressure process so dq by dt at constant pressure i'll call this as molar specific at constant pressure okay right cp cp equal to dq by dt at constant pressure now how much is the cp in my example 100 by 3 it is around 33.3 joule per mole kelvin okay or per degree celsius okay anything you can write so 33.3 so earlier cv in my in the, rough, in the earlier example we got cvs okay cvs 25 joule per mole kelvin only cv we got as 25 mole here cp we got what you call 33 joule per mole kelvin okay that is cp is okay cp is greater than cv that is the case usual always or for all gases cp is always greater than cv because in cv all the heat will be used up in increasing temperature only so what you call it? temperature rise will be more or amount of heat required to raise by one degree celsius will be less because the heat given is totally used in increasing the temperature whereas in the case of cp the total heat given is not used up in increasing temperature part of it will get wasted in doing external work also so you have to give more heat to get the same temperature rise so cp is always greater than cv or the ratio okay cp by cv okay the ratio okay cp is greater than cv always of course one or two exceptions are there in the case of liquids etc we need not bother about that now once we complete second law of thermodynamics there we'll see a case where cp is equal to cv okay well, till that point cp is greater than cv always okay the ratio cp by cv is denoted by gamma gamma is greater than one always 
okay gamma is greater than 1 always and the difference of specific heat cp minus cv is equal to r okay for one mole of gas because cp and cv are defined for one mole molar specific at constant pressure molar specific at constant volume okay cp minus cv equal to r cp by cv equal to gamma this gamma is always greater than one cp is greater than cv always okay these are the things specific heats okay right specific heats for gases we are defining two types of specific heats now the next point is we'll go to and we have got some important relations here what is that du wherever it is you can write it as ncv dt or internal energy in a constant volume process we can take it as ncv into okay ncv into t we can take internal energy right as ncvt du equal to ncv dt okay in solving problem these things will become very useful whereas right cp equal to right dq by dt at constant pressure or what you call dq equal to right n sorry cp dt okay cp into dt for one mole if there is n moles of gas dq equal to n cp dt so first law of thermodynamics wherever dq is there you can write it as n cp dt wherever du is there you can write it as n cp dt plus right work done pdv okay this is you can write first law of thermodynamics like this also okay dq equal to n cp dt in an isobaric process in an isobaric process dq equal to n cp dt right du is everywhere n cp dt only plus work done is always pdv okay now again we will go into the ideal gas equation okay pv equal to rt for one mole pv equal to n rt for n moles of gas ideal gas okay now in an isothermal process in an iso thermal process in an isothermal process what is an isothermal process temperature remains constant okay when t is constant n is for a closed system okay we don't change the amount of gas present okay n is constant you take one mole means throughout our uh, experiment it remains as one mole only r is anyway a gas constant in an isothermal process temperature is also constant that is pv equal to constant pv equal to constant c what does that mean p1 v1 equal to p2 v2 equal to p3 v3 equal to etc etc are constant c or pi vi equal to pf vf initial pressure into initial volume is equal to final pressure into final volume this is for an isothermal process okay in an isothermal process what is happening temperature is remaining constant means you are not allowing the temperature to increase but you are giving some dq amount of heat or delta q amount of heat you are giving so when you are giving delta q amount of heat temperature tends to increase but you are want you want the process to be an isothermal process okay means temperature should not increase then what should happen to all the heat i am giving that end entire heat should be used up in doing external work only okay should be used up should be used up in doing external work only that is temperature remains constant means first law says what dq equal to du plus pdv okay right du is equal to zero so all the heat given will be used up in doing external work only delta w okay now what is the amount of work done by the gas or on the gas in the isothermal process right when you are heating the gas when you are giving heat energy to the gas right gas what you call pressure increases and it will keep on pushing the piston up work done by the gas is positive right work is done by the gas now when you suppose say you are doing work on the piston on the gas that is you are pushing the piston down i am doing some work on the gas okay right volume keeps on decreasing pressure tends to increase but i don't want temperature to increase right so what do i do whatever energy what whatever work i am doing all that will be rejected as heat into the sink so heat into the surroundings like this means i won't allow its temperature to increase now i won't allow temperature to increase means when you are doing work on the gas temperature tends to increase suddenly if i push the piston down suddenly if i push the piston down however good a conductor this vessel is made up of okay temperature will increase obviously 
right right at least for 5 minutes or 10 minutes suddenly you compress the gas like this temperature of the gas will raise okay you leave it like that after compressing in that compressed state leave it for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or after that again it comes to same temperature but during that 5 minutes 10 minutes temperature is not remaining constant i cannot call it as a constant temperature process or isothermal process so i want the temperature of the gas to remain constant always okay i want the temperature of the gas to remain constant throughout the process means what should i do okay right i have to do the process extremely slowly okay extremely slowly such a process is called a quasi static process such a process is called a quasi static process okay quasi static means semi static means always the system is in equilibrium with the surroundings initially suppose say 27 degrees celsius temperature surroundings are also at 27 degrees celsius system and surroundings are in equilibrium there is no net flow of heat into the system or out of the system now i am pushing the piston down okay means i am doing some work right what will happen to the work done by me okay when the volume is decreasing right pressure tends to increase temperature also tends to increase but i want temperature to remain constant means whatever is the rise in temperature whatever work i did on the gas should be conveyed into the surroundings immediately okay should be converted into surroundings immediately such that its temperature remains as 27 is it pr pr practically possible yes okay how to make this practically possible means i have to keep on pushing the piston down extremely slowly okay not rapidly from volume v to half of its volume or one third volume never that will never be an isothermal process okay i have to push the piston down extremely slowly such that piston comes down by very small distance okay right pressure increases by a very small amount okay volume decreases by a very small amount temperature also increases by a very small amount from 27 it becomes 27.00001 degree celsius the small raise in temperature it is not because this is a good conductor it's not difficult right within a fraction of second okay within no time whatever is that extra heat 27.000001 right that whatever raise in temperature will be conveyed to the surroundings and our gas will again come to 27 okay means the time during which the gas is not at 27 is extremely small okay means that should be done extremely slowly that is such an extremely slow process is known as a quasi static process how do scientists do this means they take some um, say 3 kg 4 kg rice rice grains they take they'll put one grain of rice on the piston okay one just imagine one small grain of rice you are putting on the piston weight increases volume decreases pressure increases temperature tends to increase but what great change in temperature to expect for when you put a small grain of rice on the piston nothing no very small 27 point not even four zeros five zeros it will be some 10 zeros one or so the small increase in temperature will rise right that extra heat will be conveyed to the surrounding system will remain at 27 only again they'll put second grain of rice again they'll put third grain of rice like that one grain after the other they'll keep on putting okay for how, how much grain how much rice they put rice or wheat whatever it is okay by a very small amount right say they have to put 3 kg rice then right slowly as the mass keeps on increasing step by step step by step infinitesimally slow process it is volume comes to half its initial volume okay in order to carry out this process it may take two days time or three days time nobody but people have, should have patience in physics okay right so slowly they'll put one grain after the other till that two kg or three kg rice is over okay every time they'll wait for two minutes okay such that again system comes back to 27 means the duration for which the system is deviated from 27 is extremely small or infinitesimally small now i can say that the process is carried out in such a way such that system's temperature is 27 when the piston came down from this point to this point okay such a slow process such a quasi static process is an isothermal process sudden compressions and expansions cannot be isothermal okay however good a conductor it is it takes some finite time for the vessel to convey that uh, heat into the surroundings no silver is the best conductor only but if you put hot cup of tea in silver hot water in silver right silver keeps on conducting heat into the surroundings no doubt but it takes some five minutes or ten minutes time for the water to cool down 
टी गेट्स कोल्डर इन सिल्वर कप कंपेर्ड बिकॉज सिल्वर इज ऑल्सो गुड कंडक्टर हीट कीप्स ऑन गोइंग अवे फ्रॉम टी इन टू द सराउंडिंग्स वेरी क्विकली दैट्स वाई वी डोंट ड्रिंक टी इन सिल्वर कप्स ओके राइट इट गेट्स कोल्ड वेरी क्विकली ऑफकोर्स इट विल बर्न यूर माउथ ऑल्सो इफ यू ट्राई टू ड्रिंक टी इन सिल्वर कप्स ओके वी हैव वॉट्स कॉल पॉर सिलिन कप्स आर इंसुलेटिंग कप्स इंसुलेट मेड मेटीरियल मेड अप ऑफ इंसुलेटर सो इट वॉन्ट अलाउ हीट टू गो इन टू टी विल रिमेन हॉट फॉर लॉन्गर टाइम टिल यू हैव इट टू टिल यू फिनिश इट ओके <coughs> right how are good a conductor compressor expand okay it cannot be isothermal so real isothermal process one means you have to do it in a extremely slow manner such a manner is such a process is called a quasi static process okay most of the process we see are quasi static process only okay which are done very slowly okay now <coughs> in such process okay we have p1 v1 equal to p2 v2 whatever it is now how much work is done by me in pushing the piston from an initial volume v1 to a final volume v2 initial volume is this much final volume is this much okay or that's called river isothermal compression we call isothermal expansion means what okay i have to increase the volume from right this volume to this volume what should i do now take out grains now one by one okay it will take another two days or three days doesn't matter okay what do they do they keep on removing one grain after the other when you remove one grain weight will be slight weight on the piston decreases okay right pressure decreases volume will slightly volume will be increasing slightly okay temperature change also will be very small but within no time within fraction of a second temp the whatever that extra heat will be conveyed to the surrounding system will come back to 27 degrees celsius that is quasi static isothermal compression this will be a quasi static isothermal expansion done which done extremely slowly what is the amount of work done amount of work done in an isothermal expansion or compression okay it is like this now general formula for work done is always p dv only okay so work done dw equal to work done dw equal to right p into dv p into dv right now suppose i increase the volume from an initial volume vi to a final volume vf don't bother whether it is expansion or compression simply initial volume to final volume total work done okay in increasing the volume so in changing the volume from vi to a value vf is nothing but integral dw dw is pdv so integral pdv right now what is p equal to p equal to pv equal to nrt we are writing so p equal to it is nrt by v for an ideal gas substitute that value here w equal to integral vi to vf okay nrt by v into dv number of moles of gas remains constant r is anyway gas constant process is an isothermal process so temperature also remains constant so nrt the entire numerator is constant here so bring it out simply nrt integral vi to vf right 1 by v dv the beginning of the course only i told you right to understand physics i expect some mathematical knowledge from you what is that mathematical knowledge okay addition subtraction multiplication division apart from these i expected you to know little bit of differentiation little bit of integration also okay that's what is required here so what is integral 1 by v dv don't ask me it is log v okay so right so w equal to w equal to nrt into that is log v integral 1 by x eh, dx equal to right log x that is okay now the integration is from initial volume v to a final volume vf okay so what do you get here simplify that nrt right log vf minus first substitute upper limit then substitute lower limit log vf minus log vi log a minus log b is nothing but log a by b okay log a plus log a plus log b is log ab log a minus log b is log a by b so here it is log natural log to the base e right vf by vi vi vf by vi to the base this is expression for the work done okay in an isothermal process on n moles of a gas at a constant temperature t 
okay whatever may be the final volume initial volume okay when final volume is more than initial volume log of bigger quantity by smaller quantity will be positive work done is positive okay vf is greater than vi means what volume is increasing final volume is more than the initial volume when the piston is going up final volume will be greater than the initial volume means what gas is doing work work done by the gas is positive vf by va is also positive uh, nrt all are positive only so you'll get what you call w here this t is absolute temperature if the temperature is given in degree celsius what do you do t degree celsius plus 273 right then you will get the temperature in absolute scale so it is absolute scale if even if the problem is the temperature is given degree celsius at 270 through it convert that into absolute scale then substitute here nrt log vf by va <coughs> so it is isothermal compression isothermal compression means initially the piston is here you will decrease its volume to this point means final volume vi is less than the initial volume final volume is less than the initial volume that is vf is less than vi log smaller quantity by bigger quantity negative value we get work done will be negative negative work done means means what work is done on the gas means simply substitute what is the final volume initial volume if you get positive sign for in the answer it is work done by the gas isothermal expansion if you get negative sign in the expression work is done on the gas it is isothermal compression okay so remember this formula right nrt log vf by vi what is the simplest problem two moles of an ideal gas okay right a one problem just straightforward substitution problem we'll see okay two moles of an ideal gas is is expanded to double its initial volume okay right at a constant temperature of 27 degrees celsius calculate the work done okay so n equal to two, two moles of an ideal gas okay so n equal to two moles temperature is capital t equal to 27 degrees celsius means how many kelvin okay 273 300 kelvin okay the change the initial volume vi is v okay volume the gas is expanded to double its initial volume that is final volume vf is equal to 2v okay volume got doubled what you calculate the work done okay calculate the work done means what do you do here okay what do you do here so w equal to okay n equal to 2 moles here r is 8.31 joule per mole kelvin into temperature is 300 kelvin into log right 2v by v vf by v final volume is 2v initial volume is v to the base e so log 2v by v okay that is log 2 to the base e okay 2 into 8.31 into 300 into log 2 to the base e. log 2 to the base e value is 0 0.693 0 0.693 see better if you memorize log values okay natural log values only memorize better okay what is log 1 to the base e 0 log 2 to the base e is 0 0.693 in solving most of the times right you can approximately take it as 0 0.7 nothing will happen okay the sky is not going to fall down or earth is not going to get okay shattered right nothing will happen take 0 0.7 and solve the problem quickly okay the error is extremely small okay right next log 3 log 3 to the base value is 1.098 remember memorize these values 1.098 but in solving problems you can approximately take it as 1.1 okay in most of the exam they'll take they'll give the direct take log 3 as 1.1 okay right but remember this log 2 to the base value will come across we'll keep on getting this log 2 to the base value in nuclear physics in many cases will keep on coming across we'll remember this as 0.693 but in solving problems better you take it as 0.7 you can solve the problem quickly okay right now what is log 4 to the base e what is log 4 to the base e okay log 4 to the base e you don't have to what call simply log 4 to the base e is nothing but okay log 2 square to the base e that is 2 log 2 to the base e okay 2 log 2 to the base e means it is like this log 2 to the base e is 0 0.693 so log 4 to the base e is equal to 2 into 0 0.693 it is 1.386 so remember log 1 value you don't have to remember it is 0 only 
okay right log 2 to the base e value log 2 to the base e value remember log 3 to the base e log 4 to the base e in solving problems you can take this also as approximately equal to this also as approximately equal to 1.4 okay nothing wrong error will not be much okay after that you know because you have increased the value the final answer you get is slightly more than the actual answer suppose say you got 37 as your answer you have increased 1.386 as 1.4 isn't it so the actual value should be slightly less than 37 so look for the options whether whether you find 36.5 or 36 or something very close to slightly less than 37 whichever option is very close to 37 put that option and come out okay but it helps you in solving the problem quickly fastly okay right so this is one simple problem suppose say in isothermal compression what happens w equal to nrt log right compression final volume will be less than initial volume so the gas is compressed to okay half its initial volume means final volume is v by 2 okay initial volume is v okay log v by 2 by v it is nothing but nrt log right 1 by 2 to the base e nothing but log 1 minus log 2 to the base e log 2 by 1 is 0 0.693 log 1 by 2 will be minus 0 0.693 that's all means you will get here minus 0 0.693 work done negative means it is work is done on the gas isothermal compression okay so simply substitute initial volume final volume by initial volume also since p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 or pf vf equal to pi vi okay in isothermal process we got pv equal to constant so pi vi is equal to right pf vf we are writing right so vf by vi can be taken as pi by pf also so the formula becomes right w equal to nrt log okay vf by vi vf by vi nothing but pi by pf the problem can be solved in terms of press to the base e remember what values have given are only to the base e only natural log values you know, most uh, sometimes you can write this as nrt ln okay you don't have to write log e it is natural log n pi by pf either way you can write okay in terms of pressure also you can find out the work done in terms of what you call volume also you can find out the work done this is the expression for work done in an isothermal expansion process okay similarly an adiabatic process in an adiabatic process what happens is equation of state for an adiabatic process is like this i'm not deriving this result okay i'm not deriving this result okay I'm giving the expression directly right in an isothermal process pv to the power gamma equal to constant c okay pv to the power gamma equal to constant where gamma is ratio of specific heats we have seen okay i'm not deriving this result because derivation is not we are not writing any conventional exam isn't it all our objective exams only you are not supposed to derive anything okay simply remember the final result okay so p of course in all textbooks the derivation is there okay pv to the power gamma equal to constant this is the relation between see what is an adiabatic process you take a vessel like this okay adiabatic process is done under okay insulating conditions i told means the vessel is not a conductor now but it is an insulator it can be a wooden box or a thermocol box whatever it is okay even when you compress the gas also whatever work you are doing that heat of compression cannot go out similarly you cannot give any heat from the surroundings into the gas also okay so no heat will go into system or come out of system that is heat exchange by surroundings delta q will be equal to zero so in first law of thermodynamics delta q equal to right du plus delta w right delta q equal to zero so du is equal to or delta w equal to minus d du we can write okay delta w equal to minus du is expression for okay delta w equal to minus du is the expression applicable in first uh, what you call adiabatic process in an adiabatic process okay what is happening when you are compressing the gas means you when you are pushing the piston down obviously pressure will increase volume pressure increases because your volume is decreasing okay volume will decrease and temperature also tends to increase means all pressure volume temperature all three parameters will keep on changing 
all three parameters will keep on changing okay right so what is the relation between pressure and volume pv to the power gamma equal to constant then what is the relation between temperature and volume what is the relation between pressure and temperature all three variables are changing now isn't it so we'll see right what is the relation between pressure and volume is pv to the power gamma equal to constant what is the relation between temperature and volume so in general for an ideal gas pv equal to nrt that nobody can change okay so what is p equal to p equal to nrt by v substitute this value of p in this expression so it is nrt by v into v to the power gamma equal to some constant okay v to the power gamma by v okay it will be v to the power gamma minus one okay right and nr is anyway constant okay n number of moles and uh, gas constant are constants only okay so this constant you bring to the right side constant by constant will be a new constant so it is temperature t and v to the power gamma minus 1 equal to a c by nr n is a constant r is a constant c is a constant it's a new constant so the relation in an adiabatic process relation between temperature and volume is t v to the power gamma minus 1 equal to constant okay that is t1 v1 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to t2 v2 to the power gamma minus 1 this relation becomes useful to us in carnot engine remember okay where what you call in an adiabatic what you call step okay in four stroke in the stroke which is adiabatic stroke we have to use this relation t1 v1 to the power gamma minus 1 equal to t2 v to the power gamma minus 1 or ti vi to the power gamma minus 1 initial temperature initial volume tf vf to the power gamma minus 1 final temperature final volume okay now this is the relation between pressure and volume okay this is the relation between temperature and volume okay what is the relation between pressure and temperature okay now again same p equal to nrt by v pv equal to nrt isn't it pv equal to nrt earlier i brought v to rhs now i'll bring v to what you call sorry pressure to the rhs i'll take this as nrt by p and substitute that in p v to the power gamma equal to constant formula so wherever v is there put nrt by p and see what happens okay and see what happens so pressure p v equal to nrt by p to the power gamma equal to the constant c n is anyway constant n to the power gamma constant r to the power gamma constant so n r to the power gamma bring it to right hand side constant by another constant new constant will come okay so what remains here pressure into right t to the power gamma by p to the power right gamma it is when you take it to numerator it will be minus gamma equal to a new constant c so if you simplify this what do you get okay if you simplify this right p to the power 1 minus gamma p to the power 1 p to the power minus gamma p to the power 1 minus gamma into t to the power gamma equal to constant c this is the relation between temperature and pressure temperature and pressure that is okay p1 to the power 1 minus gamma t1 to the power gamma equal to p2 to the power 1 minus gamma t2 to the power gamma okay where p1 t1 are initial pressure temperature p2 t2 are final temperature pressure in that process in that adiabatic process so in an adiabatic process since all three parameters pressure volume temperature are changing what is the relation okay what is the relation okay so the first relation between temperature and uh, sorry pressure and volume p v to the power gamma equal to constant that is p1 v1 to the power gamma equal to p2 v2 to the power gamma okay second one between temperature and between temperature and volume t v to the power this is the first relation between pressure and volume second relation t v to the power gamma minus 1 equal to constant that is t1 v1 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to t2 v2 to the power gamma minus 1 okay equal to t3 v3 v3 to the power gamma minus 1 like that we can write okay next one relation between temperature and pressure temperature and pressure it is like this 
okay it is like this p to the power okay p to the power 1 minus gamma okay 1 minus gamma t to the power gamma equal to constant c that is p1 to the power 1 minus gamma t1 to the power gamma equal to p2 to the power 1 minus gamma t2 to the power gamma okay these are the three relations right between pressure volume temperature in an adiabatic process okay try to memorize these formulae okay that pv to the power gamma i have not derived you have to what you call just use it that's all okay right so these relations are important now we have to see what is the work done in an adiabatic process okay in an adiabatic process straightforward relation is okay the straightforward relation is like this work done in an adiabatic process okay work done in adiabatic process adiabatic process okay in an adiabatic process you are not giving any heat or taking any heat into the system delta q equal to zero therefore first law of thermodynamics becomes right dw equal to minus du dw equal to minus du okay just before we have seen wherever change in internal energy is there you can write it as right ncv dt ncv dt okay right now you you take what you call a conductor like this in insulating conditions sorry a vessel like this in adiabatic conditions like this okay now say you compress the gas you push the piston down okay it's pressure increases temperature increases volume decreases okay what is the work done in pushing the piston down okay so it is delta w equal to minus du minus ncv dt okay initial temperature is say ti final temperature is suppose say tf so dw equal to right minus ncv into right dt change in temperature is final temperature minus initial temperature final temperature minus initial temperature okay in the earlier what you call just uh, five minutes back we have seen cv can be written as what r by gamma minus one so it is dw equal to minus n r by gamma minus one into tf minus sorry tf minus ti tf minus ti now final temperature minus initial temperature you reverse the sign here take minus sign common right ti minus tf this minus will get cancelled so work done in an adiabatic process is dw equal to okay n r by gamma minus 1 into right ti minus tf ti minus tf okay right now don't bother what is ti and what is tf initial temperature minus final temperature remember it that way okay maybe initial temperature more than final temperature or initial temperature maybe less than final temperature okay simply substitute its values right if you get minus sign work is done on the gas means somebody is pushing the piston down it is adiabatic compression if you get positive sign here okay that means gas is expanding work is done by the gas positive okay now in what you call when you compress the gas what will happen gas temperature will increase means final temperature will be more than the initial temperature means if you take ti minus tf tf is more than ti smaller quantity minus bigger quantity the expression will be negative work done negative work done on the gas sign convention first law okay in adiabatic expansion is the what you call piston moves up what will happen you are not giving any heat gas is pushing the piston up means gas will spend its internal energy to push the piston up so when internal energy decreases what will happen temperature of the gas also decreases okay so right in that case final temperature will be less than the initial temperature ti minus tf will be positive work done will be positive means work is done by the gas sign convention satisfied so simply substitute what is initial temperature what is final temperature if you get a positive sign it is expansion if you get a positive sign it is expansion okay if you get a negative sign it is compression okay now in general pv equal to again nrt okay nrti 
I'll write it as PI VI. NRTF, I can write it as PF VF. So the expression for work done is equal to NR by gamma minus 1 into, right? TI my N, sorry, NRTI can be written as PI VI. So it is PI VI minus PF VF by gamma minus 1. Okay, this is another expression for, sorry, expression in a different way. Okay, work done in an adiabatic process is NR by gamma minus 1 with TI minus TF or PI VI minus PF VF by gamma minus 1. These are the two important expressions which will be useful in solving many problems. Okay.